and welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today on the show, we have Giannina Garces Ambrosi Munzi. She's an anesthesiologist and critical care physician. She wrote two Kevin MD articles. The first, Heroism is a Process for Physicians. And second, Your Greatest Role as Doctor, Storyteller. Giannina, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Dr. Poe. It's uh, such a pleasure and honor to be here with you. We'll get into those articles in a bit, and I know you have an yeah. inter intersection between art and medicine. But first off, tell me your story and your journey to where you are today. I think one of the interesting things about um, my story um, is that uh, superficially it is probably sounds uh, pretty unusual, but one thing that creativity, or art, and medicine has really taught me is that there are no truly unique situations. Any feeling or experience that we have has probably been modeled or experienced in many other different ways by many other different people. Um, that being said, I am a first-generation immigrant. I spoke um, English as a second language. Me and my family were always very interested in reading and storytelling. Um, actually, my uncle uh, had, has a book up here on my shelf and my grandmother back here on my bookshelf also had a book of poetry. Um, so this storytelling tradition uh, was very um, alive in my family, but uh, so was also science. My father's side of the family was very much into economics and statistics and things like that. So I grew up in that household and I remember when it came time to choose what I wanted to do, I always thought, what is the intersection of creativity or art and science? And to me, that was medicine that is something that allowed me to express both of those things. So I actually graduated college um, with an MLIT in Shakespearean literature, um, but I majored in biochemistry when I was 14. Then I taught high school math. Uh, I graduated when I was 18, didn't graduate when I was 14. I taught high school math in Central Virginia and I, I loved it. Still probably one of the hardest jobs I've ever had. I went to school at Johns Hopkins. It was an incredible place full of the most dedicated and true people you can ever ask for in medicine. Then I went to MGH um, to do neurosurgery residency and ultimately found that brain death was really a little bit difficult for me to handle. So um, I went into anesthesia and critical care thinking to myself that at the end of life, I really want to be able to see if we can make even marginal gains, even marginal gains in dignity, marginal gains in life, or marginal gains in sort of the experience of medicine. And throughout that time, I've been writing, although clearly it's difficult to do all those things. I admire all of these residents who are now at MGH and they're writing for The New Yorker and treating COVID at the same time, so my hat's off to them. But that is what brings me here. I actually returned back to my hometown because I felt very appreciative for what my hometown gave me. And I started the first ICU in Jupiter, Florida. So I founded that ICU with a few other truly incredible physicians um, from New View, and particularly um, Bill Ludwig, who was the best mentor you can ask for. Now I'm here, um, continue doing my writing and so forth. So it's a little bit of a synopsis of my background. I think storytelling is really at the foundation of what we do as physicians. Not yes. only do we encourage patients to tell their story, we yes. physicians need to be storytellers as well. Maybe you could share from your experience, why is storytelling and stories in general, why is that so important for us as physicians? Yes, that is such a beautiful question. I love um, the way you think about that. Um, to me, storytelling is important as a physician because it allows us to get back um, some of our own humanity. It lets us see things in a way that makes sense, not just intellectually, which if you're boarded and certified and doing CME, certainly you have quite a grasp on, but there is that danger of losing the humanity aspect of it and putting it back into a story for us is, or for me at least, is particularly important. I have the very great luck of being in a writing group with um, Suzanne Coven, who is MGH writer in residence. And she says that if you're wondering what you should be focusing on, so a lot of people say, how do you get ideas, things like that. She says, if you're wondering what you should be focusing on, and this could be true in medicine or not, she says, look at the things that really bother you and, and introspect on that. And that's actually where 
um, my ideas came from for your pieces, but also what sort of helps me understand difficult patient interactions, um, difficult diagnostic challenges, anything like that. If you can reframe it, not as a problem, but as an interesting topic and story that you can explore, that is a way of um, not necessarily intellectualizing it, but giving you some space in order to recognize it and approach it in a different way. So I think that storytelling in that way for us as physicians is wonderful. Obviously, patients need stories because we are just as human as they are. And it sort of narrows the gap between patient and physician in that relationship. Now, what kind of tips can you share with physicians to help them tell their story? There are so yes. many stories that we can share. Yes. What goes on behind closed doors, what happens in the mm-hmm. hospital. We need to share stories about some of the difficulties and obstacles that we face in order to convince decision makers to see things from our side. So there are some doctors who are better storytellers than others. Can you share some tips on how we as physicians can be great storytellers? Well, um, I'm honored that you think I have any tips, first of all, so thank you. But um, the other thing I like about that idea is the idea of representation as physicians, because I, I do think that is something that we can do better on, representing ourselves, representing our own sacrifice, nobility, interest, caring, and love, um, something that we can definitely improve upon. My only tip is, it's a difficult thing to say, but a lot of times when I saw it inside of myself, when I was writing and being a physician, is that so often we are asked to be uncompromising. We are asked to be perfect, admit no defeat, um, give no quarter, that we shut down our own questioning, our own curiosity, because we feel that we have to be perfect, we have to know all the answers. But I think storytelling is a way of admitting that you don't know the answer, but that there is a way to get to the right question. So what is the right question that we should be asking? And um, humbling ourselves in front of that, saying we don't know all the answers. And I do think that that is something important for physicians because medicine isn't perfect, right? Medicine doesn't um, tell us everything. There's something more um, because we're not dealing with, you know, E. coli in a Petri dish. We're dealing with humans and uh, the imperfections and the grace that comes along with that. So my main tip for storytelling is is honesty and humility, if, if you can do it. These are things that I still struggle with. I still want to have some bravado. Um, I still don't entirely feel comfortable taking down the mask, but this is what I try to do because, again, as I said sort of earlier, my experiences are not unique. My emotions are human. And the sooner that we realize that, the more of a connection I think we'll have with each other and the more likely we'll be able to say, these are the emotions I have and other people respond to them. Now let's take a step back. How else has art and creativity intersected with medicine during your career? That's a great question. I love, I, I love this kind of um, idea. Well, first of all, um, if we look and we can see years ago, you know, we have prominent physicians who, have, who, were, who were writers, right? We have Osler, we have William Carlos Williams. And so there's a rich tradition of storytelling. And I think it's coming back, actually. I think my guess is that for a long time, a purely science background was what was feeding into medical schools. I don't know if this is true or not. But now there's a lot more sort of nuanced people who are applying for and being selected for medical school. And they're looking at medicine and they're saying, that's not enough. What else is there? How else do they see it? Because they bring so much more to that table um, than people in our generation did or in the generation before that. So I think it's constantly evolving because we're allowing a larger breadth of people in. We're expanding the scope and we're getting the benefit of that. We're getting the storytelling traditions of that. We're getting the uh, different perspectives. Um, And that's one of the beauties of, I don't know, the evolution of medicine and the medical training, I think. Well, that's certainly true. I think that the diversity of backgrounds that we have from our medical students, like they don't necessarily just come from a science background, they're coming from Mm -hmm. business, they're coming from English, they're coming from art or coming from philosophy and it's exactly what you said that these these breadth of backgrounds that they have is going to really add to the profession going forward 
yeah, I think so. And you see all these clever things. Like my classmates are doing incredible things. They're, they're both, you know, out there doing, you know, the Indian health services. They're doing CEOs of genome variations. And um, it's very exciting. And, and one, of my, um, one of my classmates was out getting her MFA at the Iowa Writers Workshop. It's, it's a very exciting time, I think, in medicine, in spite of, or maybe even because of COVID now, I think the people who, this is a little bit of a sidetrack, but I think the people who have died from COVID, you know, 120,000 souls, I think it's important now to make sure that those people who have died from this disease have not died in vain, that we are now taking this moment and we're accelerating medicine. Um, just in the way that medicine was accelerated by the um, by the Spanish flu, you know, in 18, 1918, that um, there were such new ideas coming out. Now we're seeing telemedicine more. We're seeing the approachability of medicine change. Gosh, I don't understand how that vaccine's going so quickly developed. Um, so I think if we take this moment in time and say, you know, those people who have died, we're going to do something on their behalf, and we're going to radically change the way that medicine is performed. I think it's a, it's a real, it's a very exciting um, time in medicine in that we have the opportunity to do better for our patients. Now, if physicians want to be better writers, what kind of resources can they go to? First of all, me personally, I think you have to have a little bit of um, headspace in order to, to do it, right? And it's a little bit of an emotionally taxing thing, but I think that looking at for example, Writer's Digest, um, seeing what do, what do Writer's Digest recommend. There's, um, they have a newsletter that gives you a prompt a day um, to, to free write. Um, again, and this is not, this is Dr. Um, Coven's idea, um, to write about what bothers you. Take something that you can't quite understand, and that's usually, for me at least, if I don't understand it, it's probably that's why it's bothering me, to explore about that free writing. Um, a couple of the books, just turn around here, um, that I really enjoyed on writing are Anne Patchett's This is a Story of a Happy Marriage. What a good book. And it tells you about the sort of experience of writing. Um, good Prose by Tracy Kidder. Essays, I love The Fiddle on the Subway. Um, so I think the way to write is through reading, for me at least, is to read, see what your, um, what your beloved authors read. I often, I like Anne Lamott, Bird by Bird, but um, I found out about her because I think Ann Patchett, just the sun rises and sets with her. So I looked up, I Googled, I said, you know, Ann Patchett on writing. And all of these articles, because writers talk about what they, what they read and what they do. So that's one, one simple thing that you can do in between patients. Um, and just remember that, again, William Carlos Williams, I don't know how Chekhov did it. Chekhov was another famous physician, but William Carlos Williams used to write poems, his poems were written on the back of a prescription pad while he was waiting in his room for the next patient to come in. So they were micro poems, um, but they're seen as sort of the, the beginnings um, of the modern poetry movement. So it, it can be done and everyone's experience is interesting and everyone's experience is valid and we need as many stories as possible. I think if you can remember that, you're already halfway to the, to the finish line. We're talking to Giannina Garces Ambrosi Munsi. She's a critical care physician and anesthesiologist. And we've been talking about that intersection between creativity, storytelling, writing, and medicine. Giannina, what is your take home message for the Kevin MD audience? For the Kevin MD audience, I, I hope that everyone realizes what a seminal person you are, Kevin, um, oh, in you. the writing community. You know, you're the slate for doctors and it's just, it's such a, it really is an honor um, to, to be part of it. Um, and I hope that they'll use your website for resources, for ideas. For me, sort of in general as a person, I hope we can use this time of disruption and um, change and recognize that there's a lot of growth. You know, um, Brianna Taylor was a woman who was an EMT, shot in her own house. And these are things that have been happening in our country, in our in our friends' lives, um, let's recognize that this is a time of change, a time for growth, a time that is not, oh gosh, what an awful era that we're living in. This is a time of possibility where now we can see the cracks that have always been there. 
and we can give each other inspiration and we can we can hopefully do better now we can move forward now we have different opportunities in medicine we have different opportunities um, living amongst each other how can we grow together um, and how can we again going back to the idea of creativity how do we use creativity to fuel that um, how do we use creativity to bring things forward and not just kind of think to ourselves like oh man 2020 is the worst maybe 2020 is the best maybe 2020 is a time where we all improve in ways that we didn't know we could so I hope that there's a message of creativity and a message of moving forward and improving well, thank you so much for sharing your insight and thank you for being on the show. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it.